Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I am Aggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, authors, successful entrepreneurs, spiritual teachers, exceptional people who will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to get them as soon as they are released. Welcome to episode 179. This is the fourth time, the fourth episode of Consolidating the Knowledge and let me quickly explain again why I started doing this. I realized that after having spoken with over a hundred guests on my podcast, that during these conversations there were many ideas that they were actionable, knowledge that was implementable. However, I realized that many of them remained only ideas. I never took the action on them and allowed them to change and grow me. And of course, in time they were forgotten. So in these uh, consolidation episodes, I revisit some of the previous podcast episodes and I pick up specific actionable items, uh, key knowledge that can be learned and implemented from them. So today I will revisit episodes 13 and 14. Episode 13 was Chris Brands, an osteopath by profession and also a speaker, philosopher and keen meditator passionate about personal development. One of the things he talked about was living an intentional life. He described it as a way of reflecting on your own life, a way of reflecting how you spend your time, money, but most importantly your attention and keeping questioning, is it true to you? Are you living your purpose? Are you living your values? A key learning that came from that part of the conversation was that you should never compare yourself to others, only compare yourself to who you were yesterday. And when you compare yourself to who you were yesterday, the next question from that is, what's one thing that I can do today to be a little bit better than yesterday? And this shifts your focus into a more empowering one of personal growth and improvement. Another thing we discussed was Stoicism, Stoic philosophy, which both Chris and me are great fans of. Chris told me that the reasons he likes reading Stoicism is that it makes him really realize that no problems are new, no problems are unique. And that the framework of the problems that they were dealing with uh, two and a half thousand years ago, when that philosophy started, it is exactly the same as the framework of the problems we are dealing with today. And we all have our own first person view of the world and look out from our own eyes and our own senses, our own ego, because when a problem happens, when something happens, we think it is happening to us. And when you read things from literally thousands of years ago, they were dealing with same things and having the same anxieties. And that makes you feel less unique in a good way, makes you realize that other people have dealt with the same problem that you are facing. And that fact alone makes the problem seem a little bit smaller, knowing that millions of people have dealt with the same thing in the past. Chris referred to Stoicism as the practice of dealing with problems. And let's listen to him explain this. It's a very important point. And, um, Stoicism for me is is the practice of dealing with problems. Um, it's a way of reframing things in your mind consciously. Uh, I should also say, and this will probably come up in conversation, that I like Stoic philosophy as a conscious 
way of reframing problems um and then i find it works perfectly co when coupled with meditation which is a way of actually not trying to change anything but just observing the, the mm -hmm. present moment the experience of the present moment so i find stoicism and meditation work quite well together um but the stoicism is a uh, like, like i say each time i'm faced with a problem no matter how big or how small it's almost like that's i call it the the uh the bicep curl of philosophy because um uh you can read stoicism and that's and it's very important to understand the understand it from a conceptual level but you only really get to test yourself when mm -hmm. life gets hard so each new problem that life throws at us um that's that's the bicep curl that that's you lifting the weights in the gym um and you get to test how well you're going to cope with it how well do you get to apply your philosophy when life is at its hardest Another topic we talked about was meditation. Chris has been meditating for many years and he told me that uh, meditation is his keystone habit, the one that glues everything else uh, together. He said that over the years he's been meditating, he found that every now and then there are jumps that Uh, that's how he called them, uh, jumps in the practice, uh, as in the, the next level of practicing meditation. And he spoke about the author and philosopher uh, Sam Harris and his podcast and his meditation app, which incidentally I started using from then on since that uh, conversation. So the app is called Waking Up and it focuses on the concept of non-dualism and he helps you by giving techniques to turn your attention back to itself to start looking for the observer the seat of attention and the more you look for the observer the more it breaks down and you are left uh, with no observer, just this open space of uh, consciousness. An important distinction he made was about altered states and altered traits. In meditation, they talk about there being altered states and altered traits. So an altered state might be the blissfulness you feel when you're meditating. And over the years, I've had ridiculous um altered states uh, really quite incredible moments in time where during a meditation I just feel uh, the joy of gratitude for being alive it, it, all sorts of strange and wonderful weird feelings but really they are just altered states in the moment that don't really matter in the rest of your life um, they're lovely um, but the, the main reason I'm doing meditation is to alter my traits in in day-to-day -day life and He used an example of something that most people are nervous of, public speaking. He said, imagine if you were about to speak to a hundred people and you have been relying on meditation or breath work or things like that to calm down. Obviously, you can't stand in front of the those people and start meditating and taking uh, breaths, doing breath work to get you into that place of calmness. Whereas if the meditation practice you have been doing is paying attention to thoughts, paying attention to feelings, no matter whether you deem them to be nice, uh, good or bad, then you can pay attention to your clammy palms, you can pay attention to your racing heart and your butterflies in the stomach. And you can also pay attention to that thought that I'm not good enough or I have not prepared or the people won't like me or I might be ridiculed. So paying attention to these thoughts but stepping outside them, just observing them, is a trait, an altered trait that happens as a result of having practiced uh, meditation. Chris also talked about a specific meditation practice that he does and it's quite a long meditation, at least 45 minutes and it's where you sit completely still. And when you do that, you will find that after about 20 minutes it gets very uncomfortable. But the thing is that 
When you're sitting completely still, you're not actually injuring yourself. So you can sit in this position for 40 minutes plus, it will get uncomfortable and you will notice your pain levels rising and rising. And as that happens, your body wants to move away from it. And you just observe that sensation and the thoughts that come with it, but you stay still and accept the pain and the more you practice it the the better you get and a last quick comment about something else we discussed minimalism and i will only share an important distinction that i made uh, during our conversation and that was that minimalism is not about getting rid of everything it's just asking with intentionality Does this thing add value to my life? Do I need it? Or does it detract from my life in any way? So these were some of my key learnings from that episode. And let's move on to the next one. Episode 14 was Reem Harbat, a business coach, successful entrepreneur who has built three six-figure businesses in uh, four years and also a podcast host of the show The Entrepreneur Accelerator. Reem has an inspiring story of transformation where from Being raised in uh, Jordan, a small country in the Middle East, in a very conservative uh, society and raised to be, uh, to study, to become a good employee, to find a good job, she decided uh, to go and travel to the USA on her own to study because that was her dream. And one of the messages that uh, came across multiple times during our conversation with Rim was persistence and Rim shared a defining moment in her life when she was in her corporate job back in the Middle East she had um, climbed the corporate ladder quickly and she had become a member of the directors the board of the directors and she said that in uh, that middle eastern culture it's very difficult to find women in leading positions and so when she was pregnant that was something that the rest of the board had much resistance to so on the day that she gave birth instead of receiving congratulations she received a text from her boss asking her to quit that triggered her to start with her husband uh, their first business and a key point that she made was that as a human being you are capable of doing amazing things you just need to believe in it and to be committed to achieve it. There is power when you feel that, when you believe it and you are committed. In terms of actionable knowledge, when we talked about the mindset of a successful entrepreneur, she shared some of the tools that she uses, and one of them was to write down every day what you really want in life. Write it down and keep looking at it every day. And also things like a vision board or affirmations help with this because all of them activate the reticular activating system. Let's listen to Rim talking about uh, commitment and success. First of all, it starts in here. It starts in your own mind to equip yourself by just reminding yourself on a daily basis, why am I doing this? What, where I want to go? Why am I here? If you remind yourself that it's okay, because as they say, success leave, uh, leaves clues, yeah. that's so true. Looking at all the stories, all the success stories for different people all around the world, what happened is that it was not an easy ride for them, but they were committed, they were consistent, they believed uh, in, in their idea or in what they're mm-hmm. doing, and they did not quit. The only failure is the person who quits, who, 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 who does not wait until he succeeds. This is it. She also talked about the $1 million idea and that 
from the ideas that come in our mind, one of them could be your million dollar idea. And the problem with lots of people who are creative is that they don't write their ideas down and these ideas get lost. They get forgotten. So her advice was when you have an idea, write it down. Keep a place where you write down all the ideas you have and then from time to time look at them and the ones that resonate take action on them. But it all starts by writing them down when you have them because they are forgotten so easily. One last thing that Rim shared with me during our conversation was the secret recipe that she uses, that's how she called it, uh, to achieve what uh, she wants in her life and business. Uh, She called it the ask method, a very simple uh, way. I call it the ask method, which is just simply go and ask. People, they assume that they will get no as an answer. Mm -hmm. It's just in your head. Okay, yes, maybe she will say no. Maybe she will say yes. And she said yes. Oh, wow. And it, it worked again. Um, I, I said that because it happened with me at so many things. And now mm-hmm. I'm not scared at all to approach any person in this life because we are all human beings. So what? She's a normal, she's a billionaire. So what? So these were my reflections and actionable items that I acquired from these conversations. And I have mentioned before that this approach, these uh, consolidation episodes, is something new for me as well. And I'm tweaking it as we go along. And that's why I really appreciate your feedback. So last week I had feedback from some of you and there was one listener in particular suggested that rather than going through the episodes in chronological order, as I have been pretty much doing so far, that it would be more useful if instead I revisit the episodes in more a a topic-based manner. In other words, episodes where my guests spoke about similar topics. So that's something for me to certainly consider and uh, implement in the near future. Again, I really appreciate your feedback. After all, you are listening to this and I want it to be as useful as possible. Thank you very much for listening and until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 